Okay, welcome back to the care of the Lord. It's amazing what Scripture shows us. It's amazing what Scripture is saying to us. And that is, if you keep your hand in His hand, His care, His loving care will be upon you. His loving care will be upon you. If your trust and your confidence is in the Lord, His loving care will be upon you. We were reading from Psalms 37, verses 1 through 6 in the Concordant Literal Version. I want to finish this uh, with verse 6 and read it again to you. So he will make your righteousness shine forth like the light and your right judgment like the noonday sun. So it's amazing. He just got through saying, look, those who trust in Yahweh and do good and tabernacle in the land and graze on faithfulness, those who find pleasure in Yahweh, those who find pleasure in Jesus, and uh, uh, he will then give you the request of your heart. And if you hand over your ways to him and trust him, he will do it. So then, he will make your righteousness shine forth like light and your right judgment like the noonday sun. Oh, praise God. You know, it's amazing that the bride of Christ, it says in the last days, will shine like the stars of heaven, Daniel tells us. They, each one will shine like the stars of heaven and they will lead the many to righteousness. Isn't that amazing? Think about that. A star shines in the midst of the darkness. You want to see a star really shine? Go way out where there's no artificial light. Go way out. Go out in eastern Montana and look up. And that's why they call it big sky country. All of a sudden you can see the Milky Way. And I mean, you see what's really there and it's incredible. It's amazing looking. You'll shine like that. Your righteousness will shine forth and lead many to righteousness in God. If you're living for the Lord, if his trust, if he is your trust and your great confidence, and if you're grazing on faithfulness and truth, and not a lie, and not the traditions of man, and not our own desires and our own ways. Let's turn now to Proverbs chapter 16. I'm going to go there with my computer, so give me just a moment to. Proverbs chapter 16. We're going to read verse 3. And this time I'm going to read it in the modern King James Version, which uh, is uh, showing me to be uh, surprisingly uh, well done. Now in the NES in this same verse, I want to read it also. It says, commit your works to the Lord and your plans will be established. Hmm. Okay, commit your works to the Lord and your plans will be established. The verse before it says, all the ways of a man are clean in his own sight, but the Lord weighs the motives. So when you do commit your works to the Lord, and your plans are established, be careful of your motives. Be careful of your motives. If you are just out to rule, if you're out to demand, if you're out to have your own way, your motive's wrong. So your plans are going to be wrong. Now in the modern King James, verse 3 says this, roll your works upon Jehovah, and your thoughts will be established. What? Roll your works upon Jehovah and your thoughts will be established. What does it mean, roll? Well, let's read verse 2. All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes, but Jehovah weighs the spirits. So, Jehovah, or that's the English form, Yahweh, he weighs the spirits. In other words, he weighs the motives. But it's interesting, the word translated as motives in the NES is literally spirits. It's not motives. They translate it as motives. But see what I mean? The, new, the modern King James is actually more accurate. It says, but Jehovah weighs the spirits. Wow! So what does it mean to roll your works upon Jehovah and your thoughts will be established? 
Here's what it means. Everything in your life that you've planned, everything in your life that you think that you know the way, you know the will, you know what the Lord wants, you know what you're about to do, you know what you should do, everything in your life is rolled up like a scroll. Roll your works upon Jehovah. So take your scroll and lay it down in front of him. And he'll look at it. He'll unroll it. And then open it up. And he'll, he'll look at it. And he'll test your heart. He'll test your motive. He'll see what spirit you're of. Roll your works upon Jehovah. And your thoughts will be established. In other words, submit all your heart, all your plans. Submit everything about yourself to God. Be totally submitted to the Lord. And if you are, then the rest of the verse, your thoughts will be established. Why? Because he'll tell you when it's wrong. If you're truly in submission to the Lord, he'll tell you when it's wrong. He'll speak to your heart, the still small voice. I imagine those who demand of the Lord have the still small voice crying out inside of them saying, something's amiss. And they blame the devil. Something's amiss. But it's really the Spirit of God saying, why are you demanding? Why are you demanding? I don't even demand of you. Why are you demanding of me? And things you know not of. Submit ourselves to the Lord, and he will establish us. Amen. Praise God. He will establish the thoughts of our heart. Okay. I'm going to, going to finish that. I'm going to go to 1 Peter now. So let's go to the New Testament. 1 Peter chapter 5. And I think I'm going to just read from my Bible this time. Okay, Peter speaking, he says, Therefore I exhort the elders among you, as your fellow elder and witness of the sufferings of Christ, and a partaker also of the glory that is to be revealed, shepherd the flock of God among you, exercising oversight and not under compulsion, but voluntarily according to the will of God and not for sordid gain, but with eagerness, nor yet as lording it over those allotted to your charge, but proving to be examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will uh, receive the unfading crown of glory. You younger men likewise be subject to your elders and all of you clothe yourselves with humility toward one another for God is opposed to the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in the proper time, casting all your anxiety upon him, because he cares for you. Be sober of spirit. Be on alert. Your adversary, the devil, prowls about like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. But resist him. Firm in your faith, knowing that the same experience, experiences of suffering have been accomplished by your brethren who are in the world. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ will himself perfect, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. To him be dominion for the ages and ages. Amen. So this is amazing. Again, the Lord is saying this. Look. He's saying, we're to shepherd the flock of God. And I've exhorted you before. If you want to grow in God, if you want to grow in experience, in grace, in knowledge, in understanding, in moving of His Spirit, find somebody to minister to. Just find somebody. And start shepherding them. 
don't just bring them to me. I, I mean, you can bring them to church and they, they can join us, but you start shepherding them. If you want to grow in God, then stick uh, 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 your hand out, grab hold of somebody else, and sit them down and start shepherding them and lead them in the Lord. When the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the unfading crown of glory. Yes, you will. You will grow and change. I say often, listen, the parable, I'm I'm not going to bring it today, uh, but um, uh, at another time, the parable of the talents, the Lord has given us all a certain number of talents, our day's wages in our hands, and he expects us to use it, to go out and to double it or more. We have to be faithful with it, because if we don't use it, what we have, that will be taken from you, and it will be given to the one who has more. If you're faithful, he's going to put you in charge over many, many areas. But if we're faithful, then his spirit will be on us to transform us into the same glory as Christ. In other words, the manifestation of God moving straight through our face. Isn't that what we all want? But it's those who are casting all of our anxiety on him because he cares for us. If we cast our fears and anxiety on him, he'll take care of us. If we're not judging, if we're not uh, 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 full of anger and malice and wrath at the wicked in the world, but instead trusting uh, the Lord and keeping our face toward him and our hand in his hand, he'll take care of us. We're in his tender care and mercy. He says, be of sober spirit and be on alert. Your adversary, the devil, it's interesting, the word your there is a compound word. It actually means your slanderous adversary, the devil. Your slanderous adversary, the devil. Well, what do you mean by that? Well, he's always accusing us. (laughs) He's always accusing us, a lot of times through the mouth of people. A lot of times through the mouth of people. But most of the time, before the Lord, he's accusing us of sin. Your slanderous adversary, the devil, prowls about like a roaring lion. But resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same experiences have been suffered by other brethren. And after we have suffered, here's the hope, after we had suffered for a little while, the God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ will himself perfect, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. Praise God. That's what I want. (laughs) I want the glory that has been revealed in Christ to also be revealed in me. I want the glory that I barely tasted of to be a permanent fixture in my life. I want the glory that I had seen in other people's eyes to be seen in all of yours. I want to see the same glory reflected back to me from each of you. Praise God. If we keep our hand in his, it will happen. Because his promises are yea and amen. But here's the key again. It's in his timing. Our job is to walk. To trust to make him our strong confidence, to never let him go, to never draw a line, to never say, I go this far, no further. Never. And I've heard people say, I haven't driven a drawn a line in the sand when they have. And they're sitting there with the line they just drew in the sand and they're saying, I haven't driven a line in the sand. You did, you just did. (laughs) So don't be in deception. Stand in the Lord in in truth, in faithfulness, in true submission before the Lord. And he will establish us. He himself will perfect us. In other words, he will see us to the end. He will see the job done. He will see you become the bride of Christ. Amen? Amen. 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 Lord bless you till we come together again.